Hart and I'm from the Department of Molecular Pharmacology at the University of Groningen. Today's date is March 30th and this is a recorded class for the course Pathology and Immunology for First Year Pharmacy Student. This class will be about lung development. So um, we talked about uh, microscopic and macroscopic features of the lung, but how do we get these lungs? Um, and this is um, shown here. Um, for uh, mice actually, uh, how the lung develops in the, during the pregnancy of three weeks. So uh, a mouse pregnancy takes around three weeks and the number of days is displayed here. Um, and what happens um, in the fetus is displayed here. So the um, lung actually develops from uh, the gut. So this is uh, the gut and uh, around day 9 to 12 uh, a lung bud sprouts from this gut and slowly develops into the lung. Here um, in this row you can see what happens to the cells. So these um, this, this lung butt is first um, covered with a sort of uh, pre-epithelial cells. Um, and when this lung butt starts to sprout more uh, divisions, the, uh, the um, uh, lung butt will be covered with um, columnar cells. There are around five phases in the development of the lung. So the sprouting of the lung bud is called the embryonic phase. When uh, the uh, lung bud starts to uh, develop um, bronchi, it's called the pseudoclandular phase. When it's sprouting even more uh, bronchi and there's a more diverse development of cells covering those bronchi um, is called the canicular phase. And uh, when the first um, pro forma uh, alveoli, alveoli start to develop, it's called the secular phase. And then the last phase is when the alveoli really develop. And in mice, that is around birth and even after birth. So in the uh, canicular phase, when um, the columnar cells sl slowly start to develop into more uh, specialized epithelial cells, you start seeing ciliated epithelial cells, uh, goblet cells, and also basal epithelial cells. And um, in the uh, secular phase, when there is a first hint of uh, alveoli, the uh, um, Clara cell that we cannot call Clara cell anymore, but club cell start to develop. And then in the last phase, the type one and type two alveolar epithelial cells develop. Um, in the next slide, it's shown for a human pregnancy. Again, here we have the embryonic the pseudoclanular, canicular, secular, and alveolar phase. Um, so in the embryonic phase, the uh, lung bud sprouts, which develops a sort of uh, more complex airways in the pseudoclanular phase with uh, respiratory bronchioles developing in the canicular phase. And uh, the first hint of alveolar in the secular phase and the actual alveoli in the alveolar phase. In the secular and alveolar phase, uh, you'll see that the um, Clara cells, also known as club cells, and the type two epithelial cells start producing surfactant. And why is that? That is because um, in this stage, the uh, total surface area of the lung increases enormously and therefore the uh, surface tension increases enormously. Um, and if uh, there wasn't 
any surfactant, then the lungs would collapse. The um, surfactant um, is a type of soap that um, decreases the surface tension and thereby keeps the lungs open. So if you're born before, so around 24 weeks before surfactant is being made, then you'll have a problem because your lungs won't be able to uh, keep open. Um, or if you're born uh, with a genetic defect in surfactant production, then also lungs will collapse. Um, so what happens, so what do we call this, this um, phenomenon when there's no surfactant made in the secular and alveolar phase? What is the big problem then? Is that bacterial growth, it's lactases or no gas exchange? Um, you should be able to tell what that is by now if you've watched all the uh, other videos. The problem is that the lung collapses, atelectasis. And um, if you're born with a defect in surfactant production, then of course you can be treated with surfactant, but if you're born too early, um, then there are other possibilities. So if the mother, um, if the birth is starting up too early, um, but isn't going very fast, then you can treat the mother with glucocorticosteroids that accelerate surfactant production. Um, and if there's no more time to treat the mother, then of course uh, the child can be treated with surfactant. Here's an interesting um, gender difference or sex difference um, in lung development. So for reasons that are not completely clear yet, uh, female uh, fetuses have an earlier lung development than male fetuses and that can be seen in this uh, graph is that the survival chances of female fetuses are uh, bigger than the survival chances of uh, male fetuses when they're born too early. So here you can see 22, 23 and 24 weeks um, of age when born uh, at the 22 week uh, mark then both male and female fetuses don't really have a high chance of surviving um, but at 23 weeks for females it's quite a lot bigger than for males um, and at 24 weeks the difference is not that big but uh, most females will survive without complications while uh, this number is a lot smaller for the males and there are some theories that it has something to do with testosterone but we don't actually know what makes uh, lungs develop faster in females than in males. So what happens when uh, a child is born too early and um, surfactant production is not up to speed yet then the lung collapses and then the child develops infant respiratory distress syndrome uh, and because the alveoli collapse um, in parts of the lungs um, there's hyperexpansion in other parts of the lung because the air is uh, breathed in but um, it cannot go to the collapsed part so it needs to go somewhere else and that part is then hyperexpanded um, and that will lead to um, damage in those hyperexpanded parts of the lung and uh, you'll get inflammation there with edema, so fluids going out of the bloodstream into the lung and to prevent uh, the lungs filling up with blood the um, uh, immune system and the lungs cooperate in um, making hyaline membranes that that our first plug to repair the damage. But of course, this all impedes uh, proper gas exchange, so the end result is hypoxia. In a picture, it looked like this. This is a normal alveolus with a very thin and flat type one cells. Here's a type two cell. Uh, this wall is very thin. 
and here's the blood and there's easy exchange of gases here so when this wall gets damaged because for instance a hyper ex expansion um, then there would be the possibility of, uh, of blood going into the lungs so there's a sort of a clot forming a hyaline membrane here um, and there, uh, the immune system is going in to uh, help with uh, repair of damage and to remove uh, cellular debris. So there are lots of immune cells here. There's fluid coming out of the blood. So this alveolus fills up with fluids. Um, and um, there are uh, activated immune cells that produce lots of cytokines. So histologically, it looks like this. This is a normal lung with nice open alveoli here with very thin walls. This is a airway with the uh, pseudostratified uh, epithelium. And this is a pulmonary vessel. And this is a lung of a child in respiratory distress. Um, you can hardly see air here anymore. Here is lots of areas with air here only a few areas with air and there's lots of these bright pink thingies and um, those are hyaline membranes and um, lots of immune cells can be seen here as well um, and um, there's very little surface for gas exchange as you can imagine um, this Infant respiratory distress syndrome can also happen in adults, and then we call it adult respiratory dis distress syndrome. And that usually uh, happens when there's damage to the alveoli. Well, of course, the most uh, well-known example these days is uh, damage to the lungs because of uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, the coronavirus. It causes damage in the alveoli um, with uh, a similar result of uh, respiratory distress syndrome. So it could be infection, but it could also happen from acid, from the stomach, for instance, when you're um, out and about in the night and get very drunk and come home and fall asleep and then wake up uh, nauseous and have to vomit uh, and you're not in, in the right position, you might inhale your own stomach acid and that can um, damage your alveoli but also uh, inhalation of certain chemicals can uh, destroy the alveoli with uh, respiratory distress as a result so the first phase is called the exudative phase um, when there's inflammation and edema in the alveoli and the appearance of hyaline membrane that's when the immune system gets out to the lung and there's fluids from the blood going into the lung um, then that all needs to be cleared and needs to be repaired and that's when the organized phase is starting when um, first uh, all the uh, debris is uh, taken away uh, the damage is, re is repaired uh, so you get scar tissue fibrosis uh, and usually the scar tissue is uh, removed at some point and then you get a proper functioning uh, alveolus again but sometimes this fibrosis uh, continues to uh, uh, exist and um, become worse and then uh, you develop pulmonary fibrosis with of course hypoxia as a result because gas exchange is impaired then 